Titans, Guardians of Metal Entertainment Worldwide. I'm here with Shamir of Destruction. Thank you for conducting this interview with me. My pleasure. Um, for the new album, Day of Reckoning, what inspired you for the lyrics and more the musical content of this album? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was clear from point one that the new album was supposed to be heavier, faster, and thrashier than the last one. So, of course, I um, tried to pick up topics that fit with aggressive music and uh, the world situation of today is kind of, you know, the worst in many years, I think, you know, the, the nature of problems we have, you know, like there's earthquakes and a lot of thunderstorms and people are dying everywhere in weird circumstances and uh, so that's why we named the album Day of Reckoning because 2012 is coming next year and it's just a lot of weird signs that it's maybe true what's going to happen in 2012, you know, so I thought I'd play around with that topic a bit and I picked up of course a lot of real, uh, real topics uh, like, uh, you know, child misuse of uh, Christian preachers and stuff like yeah. this, the stuff that is actually you know, spinning in my head, so it helps me to get my anger out about certain topics, you know, so yeah. basically that's why this, at this time the lyrics are a little bit more pissed off than I think on the last album. Now, um, with the album cover, Day of Reckoning, is it more of like those thoughts kind of put into an image or was it inspired by something you saw? It's, yeah, I mean, we wanted to, you know, kind of show the end of the world in a in a in a way that is kind of very, very visual, you know, but without showing the earth as a global thing, you know. So, um, like this, um, the snake stands for mankind, and uh, the Baphomet is uh, is basically death, you know. Yeah. So that's why we wanted to have a. I think that's very catchy, you know, and uh, the cover is either you really like it because it's a. Uh, we put down a lot of cliches, of course, you know. Yeah. But um, on the other side, we invented a lot of cliches too, so we're, we can be kind of uh, nice to play around, you know. And yeah, we left the Mad Butcher away from the cover of Front this time, which is kind of weird, of course, because people, yeah. people are going to ask, where's the Butcher? You know? Well, exactly, right. But uh, I think for this, this album, it just was a better fit, you know, to do yeah. it that way. Cool. Now, with this album, in the U.S. and Canada, it's received a lot of recognition on like Billboard charts and stuff. Um, how does that make you feel, being from probably like when you first started, it was harder to get on the charts. Now it's yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, uh, we never thought we would ever be in the charts. It's same in Germany, even also uh, in the German top hundred. You know, so that's uh, something that is like. You know, n not to be overrated, you know, but it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a little funny feeling to be in the charts because 25 years ago people were laughing at us, you know, and, uh, and now we're hitting the charts with our bad music, you know. It's exactly. like, uh, it's kind of a funny payoff in the end, you know, but I don't, um, you know, I don't count so much on those charts stuff, but it's, it's cool to be recognized, you know. Now I've noticed the metal scene is growing and reaching wider audiences, say for example like kids, are, fans are getting younger while oh, yeah. the older fans are still attending. Yeah, like, the older fans are not coming so much anymore, you can, st you can yeah. really see that, uh, that the older generation now stays home in front of the TV and is getting lazy, you know. Yeah. I, I, I see them more in the festivals and it's some, sometimes in countries there's less uh, uh, young people and more older ones. We had that lately, what was that? I don't remember. It was like one, one, one city. I think it was Eastern Europe, where it was like, wow, really old audience, like for our music, because usually our audience is like between 15 and 25. Yeah. Because the older guys are not coming to the shows anymore. We'll see how, how it is in the states. I, I said it before once, and then every day people came to me like, hey, see, I'm still coming to the gig. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm 40 and stuff. So you know, it's like. But it's like this, right? I mean, there's less less older people coming to the shows at the moment, I think, because, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because you have family and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I know my mom comes to shows because I got her into metal and nice. stuff, too. So it's we have the other way nice. around quite often that, uh, uh, you know, father comes with son or his daughter. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool, you know, to see boys attending a destruction yeah. gig. That's nice. It's always cool to see parents that bring, like, their little, like, 10-year-olds nice, and stuff. Yeah, Seeing yeah. them with, like, little T-shirts and stuff, cool, it's yeah. adorable. Um, now, is there anywhere that Destruction hasn't played yet that oh, we'd yeah. really love to play? Yeah, yeah we're working on uh, a tour in uh, 
in Asia. So uh, those are some countries. I mean, we played in Japan before and we played That's in China, cool. but we never played in uh, Malaysia, or Singapore, and Thailand. Okay. And would really like to play there. We also ha have an offer for India. We we'll see if that's really possible to That'd do. That'd be really would be, cool. Would be crazy, yeah. So those are some countries that are missing on the list, and of course, uh, some African and uh, Arabian countries are very hard to play, you know, yeah, because of the, the religious background and stuff. So yeah, we see. I know there's a lot of um, heavy metal fans in Iran and Iraq. We get we get a lot of uh, males from from Arabian countries, also from the metalheads there, and. Uh, Maybe one day it's going to be possible to play one of those countries. That's, that would be cool, you know. Yeah. But basically, be basically, we played almost everywhere. There's some freaky places we've never been, like Iceland or or New Zealand is missing yeah. too. We've been up to Australia, but not to New Zealand. Oh really? So hopefully this is going to. Yeah. I don't gonna think happen. New Zealand gets a huge amount of shows. No, 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 no. There's going to be one show, and it's, I don't think there's so much people there yeah. listening to metal, you know. Exactly. I, I mean, how many people live in New Zealand? It's not many. So. Yeah, no. Same with, like you mentioned, Iceland. It's yeah. probably a very small community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, if you have the chance, we play everywhere. I, I like the challenge, and it's really cool. Uh, you know, we have we have a lot of uh, cities on the list where we played before, where we've been like the first or maybe second metal band ever, and that's mm -hmm. that's a really cool feeling. Is there somewhere that you enjoy playing? Like you never want to stop going to that specific location. You mean like... Like just maybe maybe like a city, like is there a certain city like around the world or maybe it's kind of... The best city you mean? Mm -hmm. Our best city for destruction? It's, I think there's several ones that are on the same level of dedication from the fans. That is, That's uh, cool. That is definitely Sao Paulo in Brazil. And it's um, definitely Santiago de Chile. And um, also Colombia, Bogota. Yeah. It's always fantastic audience. People are, I mean, when the, when the crowd sings louder than, than myself, you know, then <laughs> it's giving me the chills, and that doesn't happen too often on a thrash metal show, you know. No. It's but uh, in those in those cities, it's like always a very special gig. Yeah. Oh, the South America is very big metal scene yeah, down yeah, yeah. there, from what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, LA became a real thrash capital, also, yeah. because That's of all the satanic Hispanics. You know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The people from South America yeah. come to probably that yeah. specific area. It's, a, it's a area. the second generation of Americans now. They're, they're mm -hmm. kids like heavy metal, and uh, yeah, and they, they also have a lot of energy at the gigs. That's exactly. great. Exactly. Yeah. Now, um, how do you feel that Destruction's music impacts the metal scene to co that, excuse me today compared to when you first started? Of course, the first start was um, like a rocket. You know, there was something new and. Uh, and uh, the recognition was really good at the beginning, and uh, we had a huge success very fast. But um, now it's like, like uh, good to see that this whole new generation of young bands is definitely also influenced by mm -hmm. our comeback in '99. You know, when '99 yeah. destruction comeback, um, there wasn't many young thrash metal bands, and in the last years, this is all growing into a big scene again. Also, we have so many young bands now playing thrash every, everywhere we go, you know. I remember in the, in, for 10 years ago, we played shows, local supports were all death metal bands. Yeah. Now we play shows, local supports are all thrash bands. So, That's really good. So this uh, uh, this new um, tendency is great to see, and I think, of course, it's uh, also uh, because uh, when Destruction came back, uh, it was a kick-ass thing for all the European bands, you know, and creator kind of, uh, had this endorama part where they didn't know mm -hmm. where to go and yeah. saw them released rather weak out, out, output and Tengard almost disappeared. When we came back there was a new challenge again, a new motivation mm -hmm. for all the bands. Yeah. So that pushed us you know, all together to, we did this tour together with Sodom and Creator which was a huge success in Europe. So I think, uh, I think both, both parts, you know, the second part of, of our career was also very interesting and uh, but of course the beginning was like uh, very special because something new started. You know, so, yeah. so I like both, yeah. both directions. Well, thank you very much for doing this interview with me today. Um, before we finish, is there anything you'd like to say or send out to fans? Yeah, it's great to be back in, uh, in Canada, but uh, I have to say, Canadian authorities are <laughs> are, uh, are kind of uh, one of the roughest ones. A pain. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it's always great to come to Canada. It's, um, 
I remember I had many, many friends here. I used to date a Canadian girl back in the day, so I always have a special connection, connection. with Canada. Yeah, and a lot really of friends cool. here, so it's always, it's always great to come, to come here without the. Uh, could you bend over and spread your cheeks, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> no stress of that at all now. <laughs> we managed it this time so far. So far is it good? Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. You're welcome.